I'm Kirk Smith. I'm the Bishop of Arizona. I've been uh, privileged to be a Bishop here for 12 years. And uh, today I'd like to share with you a little bit about um, what, a little bit about bishops, what our, what our job is, uh, where we're mentioned in the Bible, uh, what we do, the challenges we have in our ministry. I want everyone to watching this video, if they don't remember anything else from this experience, Remember that the word Episcopal means quite literally governed by bishops, governed by bishops. Now, of course, we're not the only church uh, that is governed by bishops. We share that form of government with, for instance, Roman Catholics, um, Orthodox, um, Lutherans, and to an increasingly degree, increasing degree, our, our Methodist brothers and sisters as well. Where do we get this term Episcopal from? Well, it comes from uh, a Greek word that we find in the Bible, episkopus. Um, that's made up of two little words that you might all already be familiar with. One is scopus, which sounds like what microscope or telescope, meaning to look. And the other is epi, which is a little um, Greek word that means around. So uh, like an epicenter in an earthquake. So um, the person who is the bishop, the episcopus, is the person who looks around, or we might say the overseer or the supervisor. Those are all very similar words. We find this word uh, mentioned several places in the New Testament, most, most uh, prominently in 1 Timothy, uh, where the episcopus is described as the person who has the oversight of the church, the one who looks around or is the supervisor of the church. Now as time went on, that got to be too much for a, a one person to do. Uh, so that was shared with, uh, with elders, where we got our word presbyter or priest, and to some degree with uh, deacons, the diakonos, or the, the waiters or the servers uh, of the church. Now there isn't too much in the New Testament about bishops. There's some qualifications uh, it's interesting that uh, in the letter of Timothy, it says that someone who aspires to the office of bishop desires a good thing. Uh, so um, there, other than that, there isn't a lot said about bishops, we, we, but we do find them mentioned quite extensively uh, in the first and second centuries in, in the church. Uh, and it, it's, it's clear that by that time, the office of bishop has begun to look a little bit like it does today. One of the region, regional designations in the ancient world was called the diocese, which was actually um, a Roman uh, area of administration. We might say today something like a county might be the equivalent. And that each of these areas uh, had a particular, had their own overseer, had their own episcopus. I think that it's interesting that churches that don't have bishops like we do, you almost have, if you don't have them, you almost have to invent them because you kind of have to have somebody at some point that's kind of in charge of, of running the church in a particular uh, geographical area. Now, the, the, the job of the bishop has changed over the centuries, to be sure, um, but we have a pretty good description of what bishops do right in our, our Book of Common Prayer. And uh, folks can find it on page 855 in the Book of Common Prayer in the Catechism section, which is the part that you read when the sermon is boring and you want to look at something in your pew, uh, you can turn to page 855 and it asks the question, um, what is the office of the bishop? And it says very clearly that the ministry of a bishop is to represent Christ and his church, particularly, and then gives us some, some specifics, as an apostle, uh, in a sense, uh, as a, a successor to uh, the, the rulers of the very early church, the apostles, as chief priests, as pastor of a diocese, so that's one thing, uh, to guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the whole church, uh, we'll talk more about that later, uh, and to pro proclaim the word of God. Another, way, another word of saying that is to say that the bishop is to be the chief evangelist of the diocese, is to be the one who in, um, calls people to uh, to, to, uh, to be good evangelists, to proclaim the good news to, to everyone, uh, to act in Christ's name for the reconciliation of the world uh, and for the building up of the church and to ordain others to continue Christ's ministry. And we'll talk about 
some of those things in a little bit. I'll try to break that down for you a little bit. Um, uh, this, this job description that the, that the, the prayer book provides us with. Thank you.